Hello everybody, my name is Tasman May from the channel Tea Books and Tasman and welcome back to Penguin Platform. Today we are going to be helping you get through the ever so gloomy Blue Monday, which if you didn't know is the name given to the third Monday in January because apparently, scientifically, statistically, that is the most depressing day of the year. So I hope you're all okay. <laughs> I'm going to be giving you some recommendations for books that deal with mental health, some of them fiction, some of them non-fiction, there is a graphic novel in there I believe, and I hope you really enjoy them. Before we go on to the books, I wanted to talk a little bit about mental health itself, and just kind of share, share how I'm doing so you know maybe that you're not so alone, so we can all talk and look after each other. Let me know down in the comments how you're doing, I hope you're really, really well. I've been doing good recently, I've been doing really well mental health wise, my anxiety, my depression have been kind of at bay, I'm working really, really hard um, in rehearsals for a show at the moment, which has made me just really happy, and that's made my mental health so much better because I'm just having such a wonderful time being back in our rehearsal room again. But it has mean that I'm absolutely exhausted a lot of the time, not complaining, having the best time. But that does mean that I've had to be a lot more conscious about self-care. For example, the video that you're watching now is, hopefully, going up on Blue Monday, Monday the 17th of January. I'm filming it on the Sunday, the day before, uh, because I was trying to film it on multiple different days last week, but I was so damn tired. I got home from rehearsals, I was like, I'm gonna film now, I'm gonna film now, I'm gonna... I was out of it, I was absolutely out of it, and I was like, you know what, there's no point in pushing myself to try and be productive when whatever I create just isn't gonna be that good because I'm not in the appropriate headspace to create such a thing. So I had a bath. I had a bath, I picked up a book, I napped a lot last week, and now here we are on Sunday. Saturday I spent doing absolutely nothing, I totally underachieved and it was amazing, I slept so much, and today I feel fantastic. So please remember not to push yourself too hard, to look after yourself, you are so much more important than your job. I know that if I were to call my stage manager or the director and go, yo, I'm having a really, really tough mental health day, if I come into work I'm just gonna be crying the whole day, they'll go, Tasman, you stay at home, you look after yourself, you drink tea, you have a beer and you take care of yourself. And the same goes for my bosses at Penguin. If I called them or emailed them and was like, I'm really sorry, I'm not gonna be able to make this deadline because I'm so overworked and I'm exhausted, they're gonna go, you are more important than that. And if you're at school or at work in a situation where you don't have such supportive people around you, I'm so, so sorry, that's awful, but please note that that is a them problem, not a you problem. You are always, always, always more important than homework, than exams, than work, than dissertations, than university, than anything like that. You and your mental health are the only thing that truly matters. Remember that. And tea helps too. On days when I'm overwhelmed, I like to, as I said, run myself a bath, have a lovely cup of tea. I put on a film, I rewatch something that I've watched many times before, or sometimes I curl up in bed and do absolutely nothing because that's what I need at that moment in time. If you're not being productive, that doesn't matter. Look after yourself. In the spirit of self-care, let's talk about some books that deal with mental health that will hopefully make you feel better because they are so well written. Let's start with non-fiction. The first book that I'm going to be talking to you about is, and I have it in a stunning edition, Who Cares Wins? Reasons for Optimism in Our Changing World by Lily Cole. If you're around my age, you may remember Lily Cole as a model from about 10 years ago. She is now, I think, still modelling. She sometimes acts as well, but she is first and foremost an activist. This book is about the importance of positivity and optimism. Of course, we're living in a climate crisis where we're constantly being told on social media and on the news that everything is going wrong and we're all gonna die and it's gonna be awful. This book reminds us that everything is not lost. Humans are still great. We can be awful, but we can also be amazing and there is reason for us to hope and love and work together to build a better future for ourselves and the people that will come after us. Let me read the blurb for you. Optimism demands action. Optimism inspires change. Optimism is not naive and it is not impossible. There are so many reasons for optimism in our changing world. We are the ancestors of our future. A generation either celebrated for its activism or blamed for its apathy. It is for us to choose optimism and prove what is possible. A blurb from Ruby Wax, author of How To Be Human, says, Too bad we can't clear up the environment as fast as Lily Cole can. She explains why we're in this mess and what we can do about it brilliantly. 
And then Dr. Gail Bradbrook, co-founder of Extinction Rebellion says, a welcome and thorough overview of some of the many aspects of the crisis humanity is now facing alongside the visionary possibilities for change at our fingertips. If we don't act, it isn't for lack of good ideas. The next two books I want to talk about are edited by Scarlett Curtis, and you've probably seen the covers before. They are Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies, and It's Not Okay to Be Blue and Other Lies. These two books are anthologies aimed at teenagers and young adults with short essays from various amazing famous people around the world, talking about their individual experiences with mental health. They vary greatly. Some of them are really positive. Some of them are more about their experiences in a raising awareness way so maybe more depressing. Obviously, trigger warnings for mental health issues in all of these books. But generally the feeling that these two books give you is that of hope and togetherness, and knowing that if these amazing people that I'm reading about can get through it, then so can I. Having just talked about three very optimistic and happy non-fiction books, let's get depressed! <laughs> The next book I want to talk about is Depression by William Styron, and that is a vintage minis thing. It's actually an excerpt from a book. All of the vintage minis series are small sections from bigger things. For example, I also have Rave by Irvin Welsh and Desire by Haruki Marukami and Love by Jeanette Winterson. This is a section of unabridged text from Darkness Visible by William Styron, and this is a memoir about his experience with mental health. Again, let me read you the blurb. How does a writer compose a suicide note? This was not a question the prize-winning novelist William Styron had ever contemplated before. In this true account of his depression, Styron describes an illness that reduced him from a successful writer to a man arranging his own destruction. He lived to give us this gripping description of his descent into mental anguish and his eventual success in overcoming a little understood yet very common condition. I've underlined quite a few bits here, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Depression is a disorder of mood, so mysteriously painful and elusive in the way it becomes known to the self, to the mediating intellect, as to verge close to being beyond description. It thus remains nearly incomprehensible to those who have not experienced it in its extreme mode. That line obviously underlined it because it really hit me, because as a teenager who had undiagnosed depression, really, really awful, a good few years from maybe the age of 13 to 16, it just a blur in my memory because I was in a constant fog of depression and couldn't see through it. And everyone around me just thought I was happy and everything was fine and I opened up to one of my best friends who has since apologised for this and I told her that I'm depressed and she went, no you're not. Look, we literally took the selfie yesterday, you're smiling. And I was like, there's no point in even trying to explain to you how I'm feeling then, is there? Because you're not gonna listen. And that quote from Depression by William Styron made me feel seen, even though by someone that didn't actually know me, you know? I am very interested to read the full book as well darkness visible. The final non-fiction book I want to recommend to you is Unnatural Causes, The Life and Many Deaths of Britain's Top Forensic Pathologist by Dr. Richard Shepherd. Oh, this book! Wow! So a forensic pathologist is someone that does autopsies and such on uh, people who've died in crime situations, and he is the, the best in the UK. So you hear a lot. It's like watching a crime drama but it's real. It's insane. I got this after binging Elementary, and then this came out and it was perfect timing. I loved it so, so much. The reason why I want to recommend this one in particular is because, of course, you learn about all of these people's lives who were involved in crime and somehow ended up dead, which is very, very depressing, and you learn about their families, etc., etc. But also, Dr. Richard Shepard opens up about his own mental health and his trauma and PTSD because working in such awful situations for such a long amount of time has affected his mental health. It starts with him being on call at a horrific terrorist attack that took place. He went round and like saw all of the bodies and he had to say how they all died. It seemed obvious but it was like for paperwork reasons he had to go around and go yes, shot, yes, shot, yes, shot. And he said that that was a very pivotal moment for him who was a new father who um, suddenly just life and his perceptions of it shifted. He takes us back to when he started studying medicine right through his career, and it is an absolutely incredible book. Fascinating on the crime front, so interesting on like the mental health side as well. I just really recommend this, do it. Really recommend all of these books, obviously. <laughs>
Now onto the fiction books. I have a few of them arrived here. The first one I'm going to be talking to you about is The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown. Once again, I will read you the blurb because it will do a much better job at summary sum summarizing it than me. Sydney's dad is the only therapist for miles around in their small Ohio town. He knows everybody's secrets. He is also unexpectedly dead. <laughs> Is grief stricken Sydney paranoid, or is it kind of weird that the police can't find an explanation for the car crash that killed him? And why was June Copeland, homecoming queen and the town's golden child, at his funeral? Sydney and June grow closer in the wake of the accident, but it's clear that not everyone is happy about their new friendship. What is picture perfect June hiding? And does Sydney even want to know? Sometimes it's safer for the truth to stay secret. <gasps> This book deals so well with grief and trauma and the loss of someone that you love so dearly, which is why I gravitated towards it in the first place. It is not a thriller. A lot of people go into it thinking that it's a thriller and then are disappointed when they find out it's not. Uh, it's not. Don't go into it thinking that. As somebody that lost a family member uh, far before their time, I lost my brother when he was in his mid-twenties, um, I'm always looking for books about young people who go through the same sort of trauma that I went through to make me feel less alone. And if you like a YA contemporary book that has female friendship as well, then here we go. Next up is one of my favourite books ever, and that is a graphic novel of sorts. I guess it would be cacatacorized. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> As a graphic novel. And that is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. Okay, so I know that everybody has seen this everywhere for the last few years. It's not overhyped. It deserves all the hype. Why haven't you read it yet? It's beautiful. It's stunning. It's perfect. It is... Hmm. This book follows the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse, and they all have very, very distinct personalities. There isn't necessarily a plot, but they're all asking questions about why they're there, and why is life hard? Why are things the way that they are? But it's all very uplifting. This makes you feel so, so hopeful. It's, it's perfect. It's actually the perfect book. It's actually the perfect book. The next book is very different to the other ones that I'm recommending. It is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, a book that I adore. I'm going to be doing a full video on Frankenstein and why it's amazing in February, so stay tuned for that. Again, I'll talk about the uh, mental health aspects of it later, next month. Uh, but to give you a little, little summary now, lots of mental health issues. <laughs> Everyone is fucked up. Everyone's fucked up. Um, the most obvious thing I think would be the paternal relationship between Victor Frankenstein and the creature. Because Frankenstein is a neglective, emotionally abusive parent. That's what the whole book is about. It's about him being an awful father. That's the whole book. I just summarized the whole book. There we go. I don't need to do a video next month. Done. No, I'm going to do a whole ass video on this. I'm going to reread it with you. I'm going to do a reading vlog and then I'm going to do a sit down at the end, gushing, talking about thoughts, talking about why it's amazing, maybe talking about things that we didn't like so much. So stick around for that. One of the best quotes from this. If I just type in Frankenstein quotes, will it come up? Here we go. I was benevolent and good. Misery made me a fiend. Make me happy and I shall again be virtuous. I just... I love it so much. It's so good. It's so good. The next few I want to recommend are all written by Sarah Crossan. Every single Sarah Crossan book that I've read, which is all three of these, has made me cry. All three of them. She's a genius. She's in How? How does she do it? The books are One, Toffee, and Moonrise. They are all written in verse, which might be daunting to some. Don't let it, don't let it daunt you. It's incredible, it's really, really easy to read all three of these. They're young adults, they're contemporary, but god damn are they hard hitting! Uh, they deal with really, really dark topics and really depressing, and I made uh, my friend Molly read uh, Moonrise once when we were getting the train together, and they just started crying, so opposite me, and I was like, yep, yes, Yes. They left me with a gaping hole in the middle of my chest. Don't read them if you're in a bad place. Read them if you're in a good place and want to be sad. <laughs> if you want a good cathartic cry, go for these. So one follows conjoined twins who have been in homeschooling education their whole lives. And now that they're, uh, I think like GCSE level or something like that, 
they are going into a mainstream school again. They realise then that their parents are struggling for money and they are approached by a TV company that want to make a documentary about them. So they're torn between wanting to help their family by doing it and getting money, but also not wanting to feel exploited and wanted to be treated with respect. The next one I read was Moonrise. This one really touched me because as I said, my brother died a few years ago and the circumstances surrounding his death are touched on in Moonrise. It follows a young boy, a teenage boy, whose brother has been on death row for years, incorrectly uh, put in there, and the date for his execution has finally been set. So the boy moves closer to the prison so that he can get to know his brother who's been locked up for something like 10 years, something ridiculous like that. He tries to get to know him, he tries to prove his brother's innocence, he meets a girl there, and it's about him getting to know his brother, who he hasn't seen since he himself was a child. In this book, just threw all of my thoughts and feelings up in the air and made me a different person. Genuinely, this book has changed me more than any other thing I've ever read in my life. It's fundamentally changed me as a human being and I cannot recommend it enough. And the final one I want to talk about is Toffee. It follows a young teenage girl who has run away from home because of her abusive father. She runs away and tries to find her father's ex-girlfriend who also ran away and she's like, if I can find her, I'm going to be okay. But she can't find her. And so she decides to stay with a woman who has Alzheimer's and thinks that our main character is her old friend called Toffee. And so our main character takes on the persona of Toffee, taking advantage of this old woman with Alzheimer's so that she can eat her food, live in her spare bedroom, but then also ends up taking care of this old woman and ends up forming a really great deep bond with her too. It deals with, obviously, parental abuse, other forms of familial abuse too, homelessness because the girl has run away from home and while she has found a place to stay, it's not her home. So gut-wrenching. Yeah, I've said it already, but it will make you cry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> and the final book that I want to recommend is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Everybody that has read it has said that it is the most accurate representation of mental health that they have ever read. The main character has OCD and anxiety. I don't have OCD, but people that have OCD have said that it is absolutely goddamn spot on. I don't really want to go into the plot of this because it is a very sort of subtle plot line. It's very much about our main character and her spiralling thoughts and her OCD. That's all I'm going to say on that one, but it's fantastic. Everybody that has read it has said that it is like the best John Green book they've ever read and one of the best, if not the best book, with mental health representation in it. And there we have it! That is all of the book recommendations for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stick around because at the end of January, Joel from Fictional Fates, who also makes videos over here with me sometimes, not with me, we just both make video- oh, I want to make a video with Joel now. <laughs> Joel will be doing a reading vlog in which he's going to be reading two of the books I recommend in this video. At the moment he's planning on reading Who Cares Wins by Lily Cole and The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I really hope he does, I really really want to hear their thoughts on them. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that little alerty boy so that you get a notification when that video comes. Remember, you are important, you are valued, you are loved and look after yourself. I hope you're all super well.